One of the greatest new models of Honda for this year is the X-AD, which uh, is a category maker bike from the Japanese. Uh, it seems to be an off-road scooter, but uh, it's also a touring motorbike, also for big city using. To find out what really this bike is, we have to know it. The bike looks like a big scooter, but it's not. The technical base is the NC750D, uh, which is also looking like a scooter, but that's also a normal motorbike from the technical side. Both of them have a, a 745 cubic centimeter inline two-cylinder engine, um, normal uh, six-speed gearbox, uh, double-clutch transmission Honda's DCT system. It's not available with the normal uh, six-gear uh, manual gearbox, so you have to forget it. It's only available in this automatic uh, uh, system. And the whole bike is has a lot of advantages of the big scooters but also uh, acting like a normal motorbike as well so it's uh, an interesting uh, mixture of them the design work of the xad was made by the italian uh, sector of honda and this was a very very clever decision from the japanese because the italians made a perfect work the look uh, of the whole bike is a little bit aggressive uh, it has some adventure styles in it and the whole work all together, the black, the colored uh, plastics, the sharp uh, parts, uh, the aluminium inserts and the whole uh, exhaust system which is lifted up really high and really aggressive line, uh, the very nice uh, rear suspension. These are all things uh, which make the bike uh, looking like an adventure scooter, although we already made it clear that this is not a scooter. As uh, in the NC750D, here also a lot of technical things, for example, as the engine is in the middle, that's why this uh, part is very high and very wide as well, so uh, honestly, to jump on the bike uh, is uh, most, more comfortable on a way like on a normal motorbike. Uh, we can put our foot uh, or feet in uh, several positions, for example this one or also this one. For me this was the more comfortable as uh, I could fix my body with uh, keeping uh, the, the front plastic here with my knees and uh, this was the only way for me to, to keep my uh, body for example when i made emergency brakings uh, this is also very uh, good news that i have extremely long uh, legs and even like this i could uh, use the whole steering angle of the bike uh, in this position and it's very good because uh, the steering angle is uh, 39 degrees which means that uh, even the, the wheelbase is extremely long nearly 1600 uh, millimeters uh, it's, the bike is really very well maneuverable in big city traffics. The suspension is the most genius part of the Honda x -Ad. It's, it's uh, brilliant, I cannot say any better word for it. In the front we can find uh, two 41mm uh, upside down telescopic fork. Uh, the travel is really long, it's uh, 154mm. Uh, uh, we can uh, we can uh, change the rebound damping and uh, the preload as well and uh, it's working absolutely perfect the only problem is that when we are in a curve and using the front brake then the bike uh, wants to stand up a little bit too hard in the rear part uh, we have a, a prowling system and uh, rear part we have a prowling system uh, we can uh, only change the preload of it but it's also working very very well um, the only problem was uh, the only thing I, I felt was uh, when there were very big bumps in the road then uh, I don't say it hitted me but uh, it was possible uh, to feel them really very well otherwise I used the bike on unpaved roads uh, very bad asphalt I tested it everywhere and uh, I have to say that uh, the whole suspension is uh, much, much over any of my expectations.
The brake system is built up in the front from two uh, discs. They are uh, 310 millimeters uh, and four piston calipers. It's working really very, very well. Um, the front tire and the front brake system uh, can be braked until the ABS is working with only very big uh, hand power. And uh, it's not because the, the power need of the brake system is too big, it's because uh, the whole system is working very effectively and the front tire has a really good uh, grip. Uh, in the rear we have a simple disc and also the ABS is working there as well. Uh, the ABS cannot be switched off, which uh, seems to be a disadvantage as the bike is uh, also uh, offered to use uh, among off-road conditions. Uh, and when I first uh, tried to brake with only the rear brake, it really was a problem. But afterwards, I, I started to use the front brake also pretty hard. And uh, it was a big surprise for me that uh, the whole brake system like this was uh, working pretty effectively even on gravel. And of course, as the bike has a DCT, a double clutch transmission, uh, we have a fixing brake, uh, which is very, very nicely put in the uh, rear front part, uh, right, right front part of the bike, uh, we can fix the bike like this and uh, let it go like this. The seat is uh, 820 millimeters high, which is, uh, which is a bad new for a lot of short leg riders, but as the um, downest part of the bike is uh, 162 millimeters from the ground, uh, that's why it has to be this high. The driver's seat is pretty long and for the first moment before I set it, it uh, seemed to be hard, but uh, when riding it for longer distances, it's really, really comfortable. It's the same with the passenger's place. Uh, it's, it has a very good grip and uh, this little lifted part uh, prevents uh, him or her to, to flip on the uh, rider. The bike has a totally keyless go uh, system, which means that you only have a small box you have to put it in your pocket. And uh, from this part you can uh, fix the steering uh, lock like this, uh, the alarm system. You can also open the fuel tank from here with the button and you can give uh, ignition as well and start the bike. The dashboard is uh, made just like the rally bikes, so it also gives you a big, big adventure feeling. It has a lot of information, several uh, trip meters with uh, several different average fuel consumptions. Uh, you can always see the outside temperature, the time, the date and also the RPM like this and the speed always and the uh, gear you are just using as well. You have to start with the bike just on the same way as with all the DCT uh, transmission Hondas. First you have to switch it in uh, mode D. Uh, you do, do all of these things with, with your right hand. Afterwards you can uh, change it to S mode which is the sporty mode. It's very funny because it makes like it, it makes optically as if the RPM could go on. Of course, it's not able to go on because uh, the uh, electronic part uh, cuts it uh, before 7,000 RPM. Uh, and also with your right hand, you can change it into manual uh, section. Then you can see neither D, neither S. But with your left hand, uh, you can. Uh, uh, change the gear up here and uh, down with your thumb and uh, in this uh, occasion you have a normal six-speed motorbike only you are not changing the gear with your left foot but with your left hand that's all the designers made a relatively big wind shield for the bike and uh, it can be fixed into two positions this is the higher one and for me it was also a very positive surprise because there was no turbulence noise there was not real wind even at high speeds uh, but it's, it's really working pretty well i only had a few bugs on my uh, 
helmet when riding it. The changing uh, the position of the windshield can be made with your, with your left hand. You have to uh, open this close and then uh, you have simply to push it down and uh, fix it in the correct position again. So it can be made uh, even when you are riding, of course not the nicest thing, but uh, it's possible to make it. Uh, as I already mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, Ixad is also a little bit uh, looking like a scooter, so it uh, wants to give you some advantages of the scooter, that's why it has a little place under the uh, driver's seat. Uh, we can open the seat uh, also from uh, uh, under the ignition panel, and when we opened it, it uh, lifts up only like this. So the place under it is not really big, as the bike has a normal motorbike's techniques. So that's why uh, the designers uh, couldn't make a really big place here. Uh, there is place for one helmet uh, and one pair of gloves, or when you are riding the bike, you can keep your uh, rain uh, suit under it or your uh, smaller laptop. But it's a good news that there is a 12 volt socket uh, in this place, so you can uh, charge your phone, for example. All in all, I have to say that uh, the best Honda motorbike of the last few years which I rode is this one, the new Ixad, because uh, the company promised to make a new category. Of course, a lot of companies always promise to make new categories, uh, but uh, as maybe you all know, uh, the big part of it is always a marketing bullshit, but in the case of this bike, it is not. It really uh, can give to the owners what the company promised. A big, big amount of freedom. You can use it every day inside the city. You can go for uh, longer or shorter uh, journeys during the weekend, and uh, even when you are uh, leaving the paved roads, you are not going to uh, get upset because the bike really gives you uh, a lot of pleasure when you are riding uh, on unpaved roads. Of course, not an off-road bike. It don't even want to be an off-road bike. But uh, what the company promises about Honda Ixad, I think it can all give for you. And, and it's really a pretty great uh, thing what they made.